Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about no code and the future. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, if it's true that no code is the future, is it even worth going through a C going through a college as a C CS major? So I don't know where you heard that no code is the future, but this is sort of the th th this is to me the sort of problem that humanity faces at large, and that is that uh, people who know nothing are tricked into believing this the silly silly very silly sales pitches by people who have an agenda with well they basically have an agenda they're like it's, I always come back to the same thing the problem of the world is not money the problem is not religion the problem is stupid people it's always going to be stupid people selfish and stupid people it, it never ends and I don't think it ever will because fundamentally when somebody th guys when somebody tells you that no code is the future your first reaction should be why why is this not why is this going to be the future how how is it going to happen can you please ex in explain explain to me in detail how it's going to happen what's actually going to be done with the node code solution that is going to create a situation where you know custom solutions custom coding or all the stuff that programmers are doing what, what what's actually going to change with how how is it going to work it's the same thing when people say oh ai is going to take over it's going to do all the coding for you and i ask again how can you please explain to me in detail how and when the person answering can't go into specific detail around it which they can't because salespeople can't because they are selling you something they're selling you a vision an idea they have no actual substance it's like asking a religious person what happens after you die they don't know they don't know for God's sakes they have no idea they're just talking it's just words they have nothing and you are believing it and you're believing it because you don't do your own thinking. So when somebody says, you, says to you, no code is the future, ask them, how is it that you're going to be able to do no coding or like have all of these off the shelf solutions that cover all of the different business cases? Because a person who created a no code solution say 10 years ago, how would they have predicted the use case for Uber? Just a yes, curious question. Uber. Well, how, how would you have made a no-code solution that created a system for ride-sharing? Nobody had even thought about that. So how could you have a no-code solution for it? No, well, the answer is that the people who gave you the no-code solution, they would have to have to thought about that business case and then not, of course, made some type of system that them, them, they themselves could use. Like, because then they would have been Uber. Then the people who, who made that system, they would have had to have some way, some automated fashion, some way of not doing any coding that could build this extremely complicated custom system. It is like saying that WordPress is the future, therefore there is no reason for you to learn programming. WordPress is the future if you have no customization needs whatsoever outside of what WordPress can give you. Which is literally the only, pe the only companies who have that are usually companies who can't afford something more advanced or have like it's we're talking like personal websites we're talking about the basics of the basics the advanced systems of the world my friends they are not even possible to conceive before you have experts working on them same thing with ai how will an ai know what code to write for their customers or for the people who want the system to be built when the people who are trying to get that system to be built can't even explain themselves how it should work. I've said this before, 
uh, when people asked about Copilot, they've asked a hundred times, is Copilot going to take over? And I kind of go, no, I think that at best it's going to give us either a very nice IntelliSense that is more intuitive than we something we've had before. I even seriously doubt that because I've used similar AI solutions before. Uh, or it's going to be the most annoying autocomplete ever. And right now, for me at the very least, it is the most an, uh, uh, most annoying autocomplete ever. And the reason is very simple, because when I start typing, it tries to figure out all the possible combinations of code that it could auto-generate for me, hindering me from actually using the thing that I want from the drop-down menu. I can probably configure that, but it's actually just a bother. Because most times when I start typing, I'm not trying to write a FISBUS algorithm for loop. Or like a like an if statement or something like that, which is the thing that it auto completes on. Because my friends, it's software development and understanding the context and understand understanding the intricacies of each of the systems that you are working on is not something that is all that easy to create an automated solution for. We are talking about how you would have to invent true AI for this to work, and true AI would also have to basically be able to understand human thought and human expression because if you haven't thought about that before the main thing about you as a software developer the thing that gives you value is not just the fact that you know how to write code it is the fact that you know how to talk to another human and convert what they want to to have those conversations with that person make sure that you really understand what they want as the end result and then make that into code. And no AI today has that capa uh, capacity. Nothing. No, no Siri and like all of this sort of voice type of based uh, systems we have today are toys in comparison to what you would need. You can give Siri and Alexa and these sorts of uh, systems some basic information that matches usually towards that machine learning learning algorithm that can match against these common expressions about oh I want to buy this item and so forth and so forth search for this thing what is the weather etc so that these are simple toys of uh, functionality in comparison to what you would need in order to basically take a person who knows nothing about software development they can't even express what of, they don't know the word variable or constant, they can't code whatsoever, and have them take is do something as simple as saying that I want you to build Facebook for me, please, and it should be extra, uh, extra good at I don't know storing images or storing video or something like that, and it should I don't know do this quirky little thing and then have the computer figure out that from that you're going to need an infrastructure set up, you're probably going to want to run that in a cloud solution of some sort, there's going to have to be a load balancer, you're going to have to register a DNS name, you're going to have to probably set up some type of uh, VPC around your entire infrastructure, then you're going to have to pick a programming language, a database, probably you're going to run something like a Docker container Kubernetes, or maybe the computer is so smart that it's going to figure that out as well, and then you're going to have to set up support systems like logging, etc. Et you hear how silly that sounds. Only a person who is completely ignorant, has never done any serious software development, would think that that is a feasible thing within even, I, I don't know how long, but my friends, if you haven't thought about that, Back to the Future happened, and we're still not f flying around with tinfoil hats on hoverboards. So what I want you to take away from this is that no code is not the future, my friend. It is the future for people who have very simple use cases or have uh, who are so ignorant that they are sold the same. It's the same bullshit that everybody is flinging, my friend. When someone is telling you that something is going to take over, why do you think that they are telling you? that it's taking over. If it ha if it is actually going to take over, then it would already be happening. You don't have to, as I like to say, you don't have to sell something that is truly good because it's going to happen whether you like it or not because people see the value in it. And no code can in no way ever possibly replace custom solutions. 
because the current no-code system is literally that somebody has taken the next step on top of what WordPress has been doing. And unfortunately, low-code and no-code and so forth, these solutions, guys, they are not new. We've had them since the 90s. If you didn't, don't, if you're not old enough, go and look up Dreamweaver and see how that's doing by today's standards. Guys, when you're dealing with something that is truly innovative, like science, chemi like whatever you have, uh, you, you can basically never get to a point where you can automatically predict what's going to be the next thing, because that is what a no-code solution is about. It can give you a simple way to create something that is by today's standards, fairly established how to do that. That's what frameworks are there for. But for doing things that are truly groundbreaking, things that are going to be the next big thing, you can't predict what that's going to be and what the needs are going to be for that. So it's basically impossible to make a no-code solution. It's the same thing with AI. AI would have to understand us people, us humans, and we're sort of we're all still trying to discover how to do all of this stuff. How will we create a digital solution, like an AI system that is so advanced that it can take our own stupidity, convert that into logic and like end results that we are expecting, when we can't even do it ourselves? We can't even explain it in, uh, to each other. So that's why all of this is taking so much time. That's why it's not something like that's why software development isn't something that everybody knows how to do. So think about these things, and the next time somebody tells you that there's no future in computer programming and so forth and so forth, check your sources. Ask them specifically what is going to happen, and if they start getting vague about the answer, that's when you should start looking for a second opinion. You should always ideally have a second opinion, but that's when you should be really critical about your source. Have a great day.